fine so we see what our w max w max is and 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 this is equal to minus nfe cell and we have seen that delta g is equal to that so we say that delta g is equal to minus nf e cell okay minus nf e cell fine this is what delta g is <clears throat> okay now if if our the concentration of all species is unity if the concentration of all species is unity is unity then delta g becomes delta g not the standard standard gibbs free energy gibbs free energy okay and and my e cell that becomes e cell not <clears throat> okay so so the above equation becomes so the above equation say 1 therefore one becomes delta g not is equal to minus nf e cell minus right okay therefore one becomes <coughs> this okay now we come to the thermodynamic definition of delta g and we see that and we see that it is it is defined as this okay so i'm raising this <clears throat> let us see how it is defined r delta g r delta g is defined as delta g not the standard gibbs value plus rt log q okay fine now this is this is our reaction quotient that we have studied in while studying equilibrium in class 11th right now now at equilibrium at equilibrium we have we have delta g is equal to 0 okay and q settles at the the equilibrium constant for the reaction okay so does at equilibrium two becomes what this becomes zero is equal to delta g not plus rt log plus rt log q you can you can understand it better if you go back to the thermodynamics class of class 11th and and see the video right pertaining to this gibbs free energy so so what happens i have i have delta g not is equal to minus rt ln ln this becomes kc sorry so this is kc get that so what happens 
from this equation from uh, I'll name this two I'll name this three and make a corresponding change here okay so so what happens from our E cell we can get the standard Gibbs free energy from the standard Gibbs free energy we can we can get our RT log KC so 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 that gives us two ways of doing the same thing and both of them are the same both of them are the same fine so 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 this and this combined together these two equations together will give us KC which and which the equation 2 and 4 okay equations 2 and 4 together give us the value of KC correct now one thing that should be kept in mind is our E cell is an intensive property. E cell is an intensive property. What is intensive property in thermodynamics? Something that does not depend on quantity. Does not depend on quantity. It does not depend on quantity. Fine. While Gibbs free energy is an extensive property. And as you must have guessed, it does depend. It or, or I'll, I'll not write that. I'll say it depends on, on quantity. Okay. Let us try to try to understand that we have a we have a we have an enclosed container I have got a gas at some pressure okay so so what happens to the density of the gas if I if I if I divide it into two okay by a watertight compartment the quantities which remain the same are intensive and those which change are extensive so for example what happens to the density it remains the same what happens to the temperature it remains the same what happens to the mass it becomes half so that is an extensive property right <coughs> what happens to the pressure the pressure remains the same so that's an intensive property what happens to the number of moles it becomes half so that becomes an extensive property what happens to the what happens to the total energy of the system we know that in gases the total energy is is all concentrated into the kinetic energy of the movement of particles so since the number of particles becomes half since the number of moles is an extensive property hence this also becomes an extensive property that means the energy of the system becomes an extensive the total energy contained in the system becomes an extensive property so delta G is an extensive property fine so so in in our famous reaction by now it has become quite quite a famous reaction of of Zn Zn plus Zn which is a solid plus Cu2 plus giving us Zn2 plus aqueous this is aqueous plus copper which is a solid here our n is equal to 2 n is equal to 2 okay so delta g would be minus 2 f e okay or, or, or say this will be this now if you multiply the same equation by 2 that means if if we if we make our equation something like this
then delta G naught also gets multiplied by 2. Then delta G naught also gets multiplied by 2. Okay. So, so what happens here are since since the number of moles has become twice, so delta G naught will become minus 4 F E cell naught. However, E cell naught will not change. That will still remain the same. Fine. That will still remain the same even for this equation or for that. So that's why we are saying that E cell naught is is an intensive property while while delta G naught is an extensive property. Fine. 